Hi everybody, this is Dave Snell from WMBD, voice of the Bradley Braves. This is my 30th year of play-by-play -play and coming up on my 900th game against Illinois State. I have been given the assignment by Mr. Reynolds to come up with the top 10 moments of my Bradley basketball broadcasting career, and there are many of them that I had to leave out, but I'm going to give it a go. Number 10 would be a tie. I, I couldn't leave these out. Uh, the first would be the first game that I ever did, number 10. The first number 10, the first game I ever did was in Anchorage, Alaska, 1979, when Bradley played Kentucky. Uh, that, along with the championship game of the 1996 Missouri Valley Conference regular season, it came down to the last game with Illinois State, and Anthony Parker hit a, uh, a shot from the top of the key, uh, a three-point shot just as uh, time expired on the shot clock with about a minute to go. So that those would be my number 10s. Number nine would be the game against the University of Illinois here at Carve Arena, hosting them for the first time in eons. Uh, it was electric that night. Uh, Bradley got off to a quick 8-0 lead. They got a dunk from Eddie Cage, if I remember. And, um, but then Illinois came back with all the local manual guys that had won four state championships. So that would be uh, number eight. Number seven would be the uh, Missouri Valley Conference championship game in 1982 with Tulsa here at Carver Arena and or at, uh, at Robertson Fieldhouse and that was Paul Pressey and David Moss and S uh, Steve Harris was a freshman and uh, that was a regular season championship that Bradley won and then lost in the semifinals to Illinois State and wound up going to the NIT. Uh, number six would be the NIT championship game against Purdue later on that year. So 82's got a, a lot of these. Uh, Kevin Stallings, who would later be the coach of that team that Bradley would beat in, uh, in number nine, uh, he played on that team. Russell Cross, and that was third kill. Anderson Reese were the uh, seniors. Eddie Matthews played on that team. Barney Mines, Willie Scott, terrific. Uh, number six would be that same team in the last game kind of, because they played Illinois Wesleyan later, at Robertson Fieldhouse against Tulane and a Hot Rod Williams. And there was so much buildup because Bradley had just played Syracuse. If they win this game, they go to the Final Four in New York. They win the game, and I put on a hat before the game in Panama, New York, New York. It was, uh, it was, a, it was a great night. Number five would be the seven overtime game against Cincinnati. In December of 81, Doug Schlomer hit a shot to win the game. And actually, there were a couple seconds left. They threw the length of court pass to Kerry Cook, and he shot and almost made it. It would have gone into eight overtimes. It's something that never will happen again. Four, 63 points from Hersey Hawkins in his senior year. Hawk averaged 36.3. He had 36 at halftime. I told him after the game, I said, you know, seven more and you got Maravich's number. He said, if I'd have known that, I'd have shot more. <laughs> so that was 63. Three, Dion Jackson shot. An M uh, SB Award finalist that year that people have seen more and more uh, along the years, and now I guess they're voting for it as one of the top plays of all time. The shot where Dion fumbled the ball and it was not a shot, it was a fling and threw it again against, uh, at that time, SMS, Southwest Missouri State, now Missouri State. That would be number three. Number two would be the win against Pittsburgh in the NCAA tournament that gave Bradley the opportunity to play in the Sweet 16 for the first time since uh, 1954 when they played runner-up, when they finished runner-up to LaSalle. And number one out of a, a whole lot of highlights was the night Bradley defeated Kansas in um, Auburn Hills, Michigan. I think, show of hands, how many Bradley fans thought they would win that game that night? Not many. But that was the perfect combination of a team that played defense that I don't think KU had seen in a while. Remember, they were coming off a blowout win over Texas. They were playing the best in the country. And that night, the Bradley Braves showed why the NCAA tournament is the greatest event, I think, in all of sports because Cinderella can be alive and well. The win over Kansas would be my number one. There are a whole lot more, but uh, the bottom line is it's a, great, it's a great 
history, a great tradition, and it's the fans, the players, and the coaches that all make it happen. And I just tell what happens.